Hello. If you're here, that means that you're looking to make a website or to learn how to make a website. And more specifically, that means you want to learn HTML and CSS. And even more specifically, that means today we're going to be looking at a basic HTML document, how to make one, and what it consists of, and all the stuff you need to know to make a very, very basic, simple web page. So we're going to get into all of that today. It may seem like a lot, but it's actually very easy. And the first thing you need to know, if you've never done this ever before, if you have no idea how to even get started, you're going to need a text editor. And I am using TextMate, and TextMate costs money. I think it's $39, and that seems like a lot for a text editor, but it's a very good one, and it's worth the money. However, if you want another very good text editor that doesn't cost anything, you can use one called Sublime Text that's available for Mac and PC, and it's really great. So once you have your text editor open, whatever you choose, you need to make a new file and make sure that this is a plain text file. Um, you don't want to be editing in something like text edit on the Mac, for example, because text edit is a rich text editor. Now you can convert it to plain text, but it's not very good at handling HTML documents. And since you can get something like Sublime Text for free, there's no point in using something that is not really made for the job. So make sure you have a plain text editor, no matter what you choose, and an empty document open to get started. So now that we've gotten our open document with nothing in it, you want to set this to an HTML document if you have the option. Now naming it at HTML should do that for you, but in this case it didn't for us. So I've set it to HTML, and that's just, it's not that important in most editors, it's not going to make a difference, but it will help you um, if it has syntax highlighting, and syntax highlighting is kind of like this. So if I were to write out some code like IMG SRC, you can see it's turning yellow, and then I'm entering the name of an image, and you can see how the code is different colors based on what I typed. That's really helpful for reading the code that you write. And if you have syntax highlighting, you want to make sure it's the correct syntax highlighting, and you do that by setting it in your text editor. Now, we're not going to get into the really, really um, proper ways of putting together an HTML document right off the bat. We're instead going to just learn about the very basic things you need to know. And that is, when you're creating an HTML document, you're going to be using things called tags. And they're called tags because they kind of look like them. A tag is basically a less than sign and a greater than sign with some information in it. And the first tag in your HTML document is generally going to be HTML. And that's saying, in between the opening tag and the closing tag is our HTML. Now, an opening tag is designated by the, open, uh, the uh, less than sign and the greater than sign, and then the name of the tag inside of it. And the closing tag is the same thing, only there's a forward slash before the name of the tag. So opening is just the name, and the ending is a forward slash and the name. Now, some tags are self-closing, like an image tag. If you wanted to load an image, you have an image tag like this. But you don't need to close that image tag because the image is not going to be in between anything. Like with the HTML tags, all the HTML is in between the opening tag and the closing tag. But an image tag, you just need to say the image, and then you give it the attribute of source, or SRC, equals image.jpg. And we're using an image uh, called image.jpg in this case. And we'll say the width, let's pretend the width is 640, and the height is 480. And then I can close that tag by ending the slash here. And so that's a self-closing tag. It's just, uh, it's all, it takes care of itself all by itself. Same with a line break. Line break is represented as BR, and then I put a slash there. Now, back in the day, or in certain HTML formats, you don't need to actually have that slash there, but now we use that because it's a tag all on its own. Um, but previously, before uh, there were more standards, you didn't need to actually close uh, the tag when it was just a single tag. But now we do that. So let's take a look at what we've done. In between the HTML tags, we have some HTML. And here is an image tag. Image says, this is, this is we're designating it as an image tag by saying IMG. That's the name of the tag. And then SRC equals, in quotes, the name of the image. Now if the image is in 
the same folder as the HTML document, what we did right here is just fine. But maybe we have it in a folder called IMG or images. And so I can say images slash, designating that we're moving inside of that folder, and then image.jpg, the name of the image. After that, we have width, and I'm setting that to the width of the image, in quotes, and height, to the height of the image, in quotes. And there are other attributes you can add to an image tag to, to designate more information in your HTML document. But basically, this is the only thing you need to get that, well, the only thing you really need to get the image to display is this. But the height and the width make sure that the page doesn't change too much when everything's loading. And that means you're saying, I need to get this space set up already. So that's basically what a tag looks like. And uh, this break tag here is another one that's saying we need a line break right there. And so that's basically how HTML works. You have tags, and then those tags often have attributes. Sometimes you have an opening tag and a closing tag because things are inside of them. Or you have a tag that is self-closing and just has attributes and does its job like that. Now let's take a look at what a basic structure of an HTML document really looks like. Generally you have a head tag and in the head tag you'll keep another tag called title. And title is the title of your page. It's what comes up here on your browser. And I'm going to say this is my index page. And I'm going to type that properly this time. And then I'm going to close that. And so everything in title, in between title, will show up in the title. Now, you might wonder, why is this not a closing tag? Why not just go title, um, and then, I don't know, title equals index page. Well, that's just not how it generally works with text. Some things are just kind of the way they are because that's how they've developed over time. Sometimes they'll make sense, sometimes they won't. I think this makes sense for title because generally when you are encapsulating text, it works like this. Um, you have an opening and closing tag and then the text on the inside. In other cases that won't happen, but you'll see that as you go along. So title goes here. If you were to use uh, CSS styles, which we'll be learning more about tomorrow, those would be encapsulated in style tags. And also, you can also uh, reference a CSS file externally. It doesn't have to be a part of your, uh, your HTML file. You can reference it separately um, by using another tag. But basically, if you were to include a simple style using CSS inside this page and only this page, you could put that inside the style tags. And that's usually kept in the head. But we're not going to do that here. Another tag you should know about is body. This is where the body of your HTML document goes. And this is often useful for designating what CSS defaults happen. When you're putting CSS styles together, you can say, okay, well, the default font should be Arial or Times New Roman or something else. And you'll designate that for the body of the document. And you can do a lot by saying, this is what I want to happen in the body of the document. And if you keep all your HTML in between these body tags, then that CSS will affect everything within those body tags. So it's very useful to have this in its proper form. So we're not going to do much more beyond this because we're just trying to get a basic structure of what an HTML document looks like. And then we'll take a look at it and how it looks in a web browser. So we're going to take a look at a header tag and some text. Now, H3, I have a little snippet set up for uh, typing in these headers because it's easier for me that way um, when I'm doing blog entries. So as you can see, my text expansion took over here. But if I were to type out my page in here, you'll see what it forms. And there's an H3 tag, the text on the inside, and then slash H3. And that's saying header 3. And you also have H1, H2, you also have H4, and these designate generally, by default, how big the header is going to be. So H1 is going to be the biggest, and H4 is going to be the smallest, and they're usually bold text. But you can set these styles independently of one another, as you like them, in your CSS. But we won't get to that right this second. So I'm going to say my page is the header, and we might as well change the title to my page as well, so it's consistent. 
and then I'm going to type some text here. This is my page. Thanks for coming to visit. Or why don't we say, bye. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, so what do we do when we have our actual HTML page finished? This isn't really a great finished product here, but we're going to take a look at it as it stands. So I'm going to go into my projects folder where I'm keeping this HTML document, and I'm going to drag it onto my web browser. We're using Safari for demo purposes. So you can see here my page. This is my page. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. And these text styles are different. So let's go back into the HTML document for a second. Change this to H1. Save it. Go back to the web browser. Reload the page. You can see that text just got bigger like we talked about. So that's basically how you set up an HTML page. Before we go, let's take a look at a couple of extra tags that you'll want to know right off the bat to get your HTML page in shape when you're starting to work with CSS. First off, let's take a look at div. A div is a way of specifying a specific set of elements on the page. I'm just going to indent those so we know they're in the div. And so you might have a div called header, and we specify that with an ID. Now you can use CSS to target a div called header and move it around the page, set specific elements for that div on its own, or if that div has uh, some more shared elements, you can use something called a class. That might be shared elements or something, whatever you want to call it. And that can also, you can also target a class in CSS that says, I want all text in shared elements uh, um, to be bold. So anything, any element that is, that has the class shared elements will automatically turn bold. So those are a couple of things you can do with divs, but they're mainly for organization. They don't really do anything unless you're using them with CSS. So there we have our div. If I wanted to specify a style for just um, this text right here, I could use span. There's my text expansion being a problem again. Um, so ignore that. Slash span. Now this doesn't do anything on its own, but if you specify a class for this, then it will be, then that class will just affect this text here. Or you can specify an ID and target that span directly, just like a div. Um, but what you can also do, and you can do this in a div too, but this is generally used for little pieces of information here. Um, you can specify a style. And so I'm going to use the font weight, uh, font weight element and uh, make that bold. And that will turn this text bold. So I'm saving that. I'm going to open up our test browser, reload. And as you can see, there is bold text here and not there. And if I am to remove this span, the bold will go away. Another way you can make things bold are using the B tags or strong, which is better if you want to have an emphasis on the bold text in a text-to-speech reader. Bold will just make it a visual bold. And the same goes for italics, which is I, or EM, which is emphasis. So if I go into the web browser again, reload the page, you can see this text is now italicized. But it will also be read with emphasis in a text-to-speech editor because I used EM. So make sure that you're, when you want that to happen in text-to-speech, you use EM and not I. I is just for stylistic purposes. So, those are a few tags that are good to know when you're writing HTML, and we'll get into more as the week's lessons go on on how they interact with CSS and how CSS works, which is what we'll be looking at tomorrow.